Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop. Howdy! Well, everybody's making Christmas ornaments. I'm not feeling really Christmassy just yet, but I am feeling ornamenty. Ornamenty? Ornam. Orn I'm feeling that way a little bit. So I, th I had an idea in mind, and I might be able to dress it up and make it festive by the end of this. I don't know. I'm going to try and use just two tools, this parting tool and this 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I thought about making a Christmas tree ornament. I want to make it, I'm, whatever I make, I want to make in the Shady Acres fashion, meaning bark on. In the case of a Christmas tree, if you were going to have bark on, say, each layer of the tree, bottom to top, then the, the blank would actually have to be shaped like a Christmas tree in order to do that. I've given, it a, I've given that part a lot of thought, and I, there's just no other way to do it. I couldn't find any <laughs> branch that's shaped like that. This, I believe, is a, a, a young maple tree. They grow here all over the place and they get so old and then they fall over before they ever get to full size. It's kind of a white wood. I don't know if you can see the end there, but it's kind of whitish, which will uh, lend itself to being colored a little bit, maybe if we decide to go that route. I'm gonna make a, a birdhouse, just a simple little birdhouse. This piece is about five inches long. It's about an inch and a quarter in diameter. And I'm just, I'm just gonna wing it. Now I have this held in my chuck, not in the jaws as you can see, but in the inner portion of the jaws down here. Not, not the right way to do it. I could just turn it between centers, but I like to use my chuck and so I am and, and that's it. So I'm just gonna start here and we'll see what happens. I have no idea. I'm not even gonna wear a mask or a face shield or nothing. We'll turn the speed up to about, oh, let's see. There's about 1,600. We'll try that. I'm just going to make a little parting cut here just so I know where the bottom is. So that'll be the tippy-tippy top. Now I'm going to take my spindle gouge. Just bevel that roof. We'll stop there before it gets too small. And I might change that bevel, I don't know. And then I'm just gonna come in here and, and cut the body. Let's see, here's the bottom of the piece. Well, I can see that's going to be a pretty tall, skinny birdhouse, isn't it? So something like that. Now I'm going to change the, the roof. I don't, I don't want the birdhouse to be that tall. Probably... We'll go back to the parting tool for a minute. Back to the spindle gouge. So remember, everything below here is waste, and everything above here is waste. So does that look like a birdhouse? I think it does. So what? So now I'm going to part this a little further. I just did that so that I don't have a lot to do once this is finished up. Well, I think the body's still just a tad too thick. That might be better. So I guess I'll sand it. I have this, uh, I think it's 1200 grit. I'm going to turn the speed way down here. It doesn't need much at all. Yeah, okay. smooth as could be. I'm going to part this off down here. I'm gonna have to keep the speed down now, even though it's held in the chuck. It's kind of long to be held by those narrow interior jaws. Wobble. 
Okay, then I can I can touch that up with sandpaper. So we're done with this part. We'll try a green body. I don't know if I've ever used these before. No, that looks okay. I'm going to get the roof down just a little bit tighter here. Turning forward, of course. And I'm going to turn the speed up some. I hope I don't get too much wobble. Something like that. I'm not trying to get anything perfect. I'm just trying to get it to look like something kind of rustic. Yeah, that's good. And how about a red roof birdhouse? Now, I see I made a mistake, so I've got to drill a hole for the bird to get into the house, of course, and maybe a perch hole. I was going to go find a little tiny stick, a little twig. Okay, I found a little twig, so I'm just going to use this brad point bit. I've got my tool rest set on what I believe to be the center, the horizontal here. So I'm going to drill a hole for that little twig for the perch. And then a little bit larger hole for the entryway. Okay, and then my little twig. I'll glue that in there. Well, I probably don't even have to glue it in. It won't be that long, don't worry. I don't know how long it needs to be, so I gotta look at it. I'm just gonna cut this off with these side cutters. There we go. What do you think? And we'll see if we can't just cut that off. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I guess that's all we gotta do. I actually need kind of a flat top on here so that I can drill a, a hanger hole. So maybe my parting tool would be the right way to go. Wow, that's a big parting tool. Well, that didn't work so good. And I'll just cut that off. And then I'll drill a hole for uh, some kind of mounting hook. Well, that turned out pretty cute. I'll show it to you at the end. It was also kind of fun, so I'm going to try... How about a Christmas mushroom? <laughs> I 
I could just hear my daughter. I'll probably give this to her for her tree. I could just hear her explaining it to visitors. Well, that's our Christmas mushroom. What do you mean? <laughs> well, what color is a Christmas mushroom anyway? I guess yellow is not really a Christmas color, is it? Okay. So, what color? Maybe it'll be a multicolor. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put brown down here. I know brown's not too Christmassy. And then what? I'm I'm gonna go you know with Christmas colors. It's a Christmas mushroom. So green for the top or green for the middle, red for the top. What's it gonna be? Come on, speak up. Green, red, red, green. Okay, red it is. Maybe all red, huh? All red? You think? All right, you're the boss. Yeah, that's our Christmas mushroom. Well, maybe I should have put green right here where it hits the grass, huh? I don't think it'll work. I'm not going to be able to get green over brown. Oh, well. Not exactly. Now it's almost black. Green and brown make black. I never heard of that. Well, it is what it is. And since I have it mounted in the lathe and I need to drill a hole for a hanger, it'll be easier to do it now, so I'm going to put my chuck in. I'm going to cover something else wood turning wise here for just a second. It's come to my attention that not everybody knows what these are. This is a Morse taper drill chuck. It's got a number two Morse taper here. Fits into the tailstock or the headstock, either one. And you just put that in there like that and put your drill bit in it or your whatever. This is a 564 drill bit. I wasn't sure this chuck would go small enough to hold it. Okay, and I just want to drill a little hole in the top center of this for a hook. Now, of course, normally on a lathe, you're drilling a lot larger hole than that. Maybe you're using a Forstner bit to drill out the center of a vase or maybe a big bowl even. Sometimes people will prefer to drill them out rather than do all that turning. Now what I do with my hook, it's just a little eye screw. Actually, it's, actually it's bigger than I wish it was, but it's the smallest one I could find. There we go. We'll just part this off and we'll be done with it. And you can get those drill chucks just about anywhere. Amazon, eBay, any of the turning places. Say hi, Curly. Say hi to the folks. We hardly ever get curly in the shop, but he decided to make an exception today, didn't you, bud? Yeah, that's curly, curly cat. Now go find some mice. Well, Christmas mushroom. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, I do know that it looks a lot like a hummingbird feeder, but it's a Christmas mushroom because I said it is. And I'm the one that made it, so I would know. And then we have our Christmas birdhouse. Now this does look like a birdhouse, right? Well, 
and they're very lightweight. They don't need to be hollowed out to hang on a Christmas tree. They don't weigh anything. Half an ounce, maybe. I love my cute little perch. So that's the Shady Acres take on Christmas ornaments. I hope you liked them. If you did like these, give me a thumbs up, would you? I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, holy cow. I can't tell you what that means to me. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video, probably right about now. Your comments are always welcome and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.